What's good, everyone? Uh, welcome to the Through It All podcast. Uh, today, super special guest, my guy, Jonathan McCree. Um, so interesting kind of backstory on how I found his stuff. You you had a bunch of stuff going on TikTok. I want to say it was yeah. during quarantine, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I started. Right. And then my friend, oh, yeah. yeah, 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 Grayson Beeman, he, he was like, bro, you got to check this dude out. I was like, all right, all right. So he sent me a couple yeah. of posts, and I was like, damn, I really like the stuff you were preaching, and I've been following you along since. Uh, kind of when you you started as a barber, I remember that. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, uh, I just really wanted to flow um, on on all the stuff you've been preaching throughout your videos, and kind of have just a full conversation. But uh, just ca- yeah. just to kind of start us off. Um, what what got you into wanting to pursue like? uh like creating content that would help others out no i appreciate it man first off just grateful to be here definitely going to be a great conversation but uh i've definitely done many things in my life you know like you said i was a barber but always just had that kind of creative energy to you know leave my mark and uh just kind of express what i love i have many passions i love to do many things you know golf cut hair I'm a huge nature guy so just to kind of you know, be my best self in the process and just express it to the world and hopefully inspire people with it. That's beautiful. What do you, what do you love about like the nature, the nature side of, of oh, stepping in there? Go, go off, off that. Cause I can tell you're very passionate about it. Oh, and I love sure. the, the pictures you've been uh, posting. I oh, appreciate it. No, nature's always been something really, uh, I've just resonated with since I was really young. I mean, even just going back when I was super young, I was a bird watcher. I was kind of just that, Like, that was just what I was, like, crazy at as a kid. Like, I was super good at it. And uh, as I got older, I just kind of seen the deepness in nature and uh, how unique it is and just how, I mean, we are nature. You know, we're part of nature. And just kind of also seeing how society has drifted away from nature and how nature really needs us. So Mm -hmm. I kind of seen a uh, opportunity to hopefully bring humanity back and also just spread the beauty of nature and hopefully just inspire people to go out to tap in with nature and uh because it needs it so it's definitely something i love to do and something that i'm excited for the future because i think you know we just need to change the culture of nature and bring people back and it's going to be- benefit us and the planet so yeah. it's going to be exciting what do you think we need to change or something that's that you see and you're like man bro i wish we just did this a little bit better wow. and we'd all be on the just, right path just the landscapes just kind of how I mean, we got to think in the last 200 years, just in North America, we have altered the landscape so much in the way of just what true habitat is, what true nature is. I mean, biodiversity is at such a loss in the way of just how we have lawns all over the place, invasive species are everywhere. And just, but people don't understand that they don't, they're not aware of what actually real nature is and what it's supposed to look like. You know, I'm a bird watcher, so I see the deepness on how an ecosystem functions, how everything relies on each other. And it's just so out of balance. And even in my own property, you know, in the last three years, I've learned a lot and I've added native plants. Native plants are just the plants that evolved for millions of years that are supposed to be here. You know, everything starts with plants and I've just learned so much. I've planted over like 400 plants. I've seen nature return and how it's impacted me, impacted biodiversity. And everyone has a house, everyone has a home and everyone, you know, cuts the grass, fertilizes non-native plants without realizing it. And we all can make such a powerful impact on biodiversity in our own front yard. But I just don't think people are aware of that. And that's kind of really what the main purpose is, just get people aware of what they can do and just tap back, tap back in and help nature. Man, bro, that's, uh, yeah. that's so deep. I love it. Oh, for sure, man. I love <laughs> it. Um, I kind of want to uh, like just roll out your path as like, impacting people's lives obviously because you went on a you went on a bunch of like i remember you started as a obviously i'm just catching you when you started yeah, posting sure. right so it's like i saw your barber when you were doing that and then you played golf right you were yep. doing a bunch of that and then uh then it really i mean you were always kind of posting the nature stuff right yep. but uh and then you started doing a bunch more and especially the honeysuckle stuff i, I didn't <laughs> no, see that yeah, but uh and then one more thing too, is it cool if like if you can back up just a slight bit so I can see your full face in the frame? Oh, for sure, for sure. Perfect. Gotcha. That's great. Yeah, yeah. There we go. And I yeah, can edit that. No, 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 not at all. But uh, yeah, kind of just if you can remember that question, just go off, off of no, that. No, for sure. 
I've definitely been on quite a journey. I will backtrack it to when I kind of started becoming a barber. So I'm 22 right now. And uh, sophomore year of high school, you know, I always just kind of wanted to work for myself. And barbering was such a great opportunity to kind of become my own boss at an early age. So boom, sophomore year, started trying to get people to cut their hair. Uh, it's definitely started rough. You know, I remember I jacked up some people and they go to school and then everyone was <laughs> like, oh, hell no, I'll never get my hair cut from you. And then it turned into people begging me for haircuts and it definitely kind of blew up. I gained a good following and I was definitely supposed to cut hair. I'm very grateful for that. Not really because what I learned cutting hair, but just having interactions with people and learning kind of people skills and just connecting. And because, you know, you have deep conversations with your clients and stuff and it's such a great start. But, you know, I really, uh, I, th I thought barbering was going to be it. I thought that was going to kind of be my future. Like I was thinking I want to be the best barber of, all, barber of all time. Like I'm ready to go all in on it. Yeah. And then I kind of, you know, transitioned a little into, because it's, it's always been nature, but I almost like I didn't know that. And uh, so then barbering kind of came about and then uh, it was just about creating content. I started to do like some nature barber type content and then I will get into the golf. And then I had a buddy and I love golf and I never really played golf in high school. It wasn't like, but I just, you know, I love going out on the course five and that's always just been something right. I love to do. And me and my buddy who I would create content with, TikTok was starting to become a big thing. And I'm like, yo, bro, let's just go on the course. I don't know what we're going to do. I got no expectations. You know, we're kind of just funny together. I'm like, yeah. let's just record something. Let's see what happens. Cause I was just in a mode of just kind of trying to go viral for sure. You know, trying to create something and uh, shit, we created just some, great powerful stuff funny ass stuff uh man shout out my guy yasin yeah it was just such a great time those blew up and then at that moment you know to start i had no like thoughts i want to create golf content but they blew up so it's like oh mm. man i definitely should do this you know so let's keep this flowing so then i created obviously the golf movement battle play which was just i, I mean i loved every second of it and uh, it was so incredible and then as that I think I did a year of that, built a good following, just, man, the people, just so much love. And I just have so much love for all that community. And then as it got bigger, you know, from the start, I realized I love this, but is golf something I truly want to continue to build? Because anything I'm going to go all, all in on, like I'm going to go all in on, and I'm not just going to do it just to do it, you know? And then I started to feel, uh, I wouldn't say the motivation wasn't there, but still, intuitively, I have this big purpose for nature. Like, I'm here for a reason, and I know that. And no one really else can see that, but I know that. So I was starting to feel resistance. And, like, you know, you need to take a step back, and you need to focus on the real mission. And uh, then kind of the journey, I transitioned. I got off social media for, like, six months, which, she's powerful time. So much growth, so much downloads, intuition. Kind of saw the big picture of things. I knew I was definitely going to lose momentum and stuff, but... I mean, I know I'll be successful, you know, it wasn't like, oh man, I'm, I'm like, you know, fear and stuff. I'm going to lose all this. Like, no, nah, it's just getting started, but kind of where I'm at now, starting to go all in on the nature. You know, I feel like I don't, it doesn't just have to be nature. It doesn't just have to be golf. Like if I'm trying to change a culture of nature, I can do that in many ways. I'm definitely going to get back onto the course uh, side. I love basketball. I've been grinding on the court because that's just something I love to do. Yeah. Barbering, I still cut hair, kind of select few, but that's still a great way to connect with people. But I'm just a dude that's kind of doing everything right now, but it all needs to lead into the main purpose, which is just nature. You know, I'm, I'm really in a way going to be an icon for nature to change the culture. So looking forward to that. Hopefully that answered your question. I didn't go too crazy on it, but. <laughs> nah, bro, that's that's awesome, man. I, I love it. It's cool to see, because uh, I just saw the videos, right? But the way you... Uh... To hear you talk about it was 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 dope. Um, yeah, bro, the that'll pla and, and oh, all yeah. that stuff, man. It's I, I still say it on the course, um, but I, I I took notice that you you were doing some basketball. You were posting some basketball vids for a while. So I play college basketball out in California. Oh really? Yeah. So oh, I nice love job. I love hoops and and what it brings. Yeah. But what do you like about it specifically that that kind of draws you to the sport? Man, so I've always like. Going in, even in high school, I thought, you know, I'm, I want to go to the NBA. Like, that was almost my first love, you know, just kind of that. And uh, I tore my ACL twice. So that kind of definitely set me back. Uh, senior year, I tore it again. I only played freshman year. So it wasn't like, but I almost tapped into that mindset sophomore to junior year, and I was just grinding. And I got pretty decent at that point. And then uh, 
but I just always loved basketball. I remember I tore my, when I tore it sec on my, on my second time, I'm like, I'm probably not going to play again. And then as I developed more into this just mindset and body and who I really am, I looked at it like, yo, why am I limiting myself here? You know, and kind of went on a journey to challenge myself, like, yo, let's get back, but like, let's set no limits and let's just get really, really good. So in the last year, I'm grateful to be around some great trainers that I'm friends with too, that, I mean, I'm just breaking limits. I'm probably the strongest I've ever been in my knees. I don't know if you know knees over toes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm tapped into that. Like, and just love the grind of basketball for no specific reason. Like I'm grinding every week, but there's no like, Oh, I want to play this or play that. Like, I'm just trying to be cold as hell at it and just That's take true. over. And, uh, I really think this is kind of interesting, but I think, you know, if I'm preaching about nature, I think it's gonna be really dope. It's like, oh, this dude can hoop like that too, just to be able to connect with more people, you know? So yeah, yeah that's coming for sure. Man, that's the best type of love where you just do it with no end result in, in, exactly. inside. It's just because you purely love it. Exactly. And that's, that's so cool because I watched, uh, like the video that I was like, bro, I like, cause I didn't start the podcast until, I think it was like a year ago or whatever, and I and uh, I, I I didn't like I didn't start it and whatever, and then once I started, I I wanted to like look for different people that I could have on, people that I I rock with, and then I saw your video, bro. That um, I literally just pulled it up earlier. It was like the dude's comment was, "Notice how you fell off when you stopped your golf boots." SMH disappointing, and your response to it, I was like, "Cause I literally saved it, bro, from like." I think it was like a year or two ago and it was, yeah. it's been saved. And it was like, when I saw that vid, I, I, I knew that bro, this guy's fucking tapped in, you know what I mean? And just your response to how everyone views, like, you know, you having X amount of likes is a success. And how, how do you, cause I heard it a little bit in the video, but like, how would For you sure. explain success? It was just an amazing clip, man. No, definitely. I remember that. I mean, that's kind of the, if you are caught up in likes and this and that, you're already in the wrong. So just, I mean, you got to have that belief in yourself that's just unwavering from other people. And I knew, you know, when I kind of stopped posting this, things might fall off, but it, it really doesn't matter at all. If you really just have that belief and understanding of who you are and you just consistently work on yourself, you set a foundation for success, like you're going to be successful. For me, it's more about fulfilling my truest purpose i'm not just chasing success i'm chasing my success and you got to get very particular and go within and really why are you here ask the tough questions and just and just chase it and take action but now because i feel like a lot of people are in that boat and it's tough you know when you go viral on something everyone views you as that they don't really when you could be someone totally different and then you kind of fall into this character of that you can kind of get lost in it and it's tough. And I feel like there's even a lot of creators right now that are images of something that truly they don't even really love or like anymore. And it's tough. So you really have to have that discipline to stay true to who you really are. And uh, if you do that, like you're going to be successful. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. That's, 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 that's so cool. What are your keys to happiness and, and building a successful life? Then, like, what do you, what are your kind of targets when you think of the word happiness? I think you really just got to want to do what you love and really just embody that and not be afraid to express it. Like I used to be afraid that express, you know, I love bird watching. It's like, bro, like I love it. Like what's the, I love it for a reason to express it. And, uh, and I think just set that foundation, you know, I kind of said that, but being disciplined every day to kind of just embody and, you know, I have a routine every morning, just kind of get my energy to find myself, to not lose myself and just, uh, just to go after with the full ambition to do what you love and uh, set no limitations to do it for yourself, really no one else. And just to focus on yourself. And uh, I think that's the journey, you know, it's, it's the journey is the part, it's not the destination. So just taking action and riding with the flow. Can you go into your daily routine and tell us? Absolutely. Like absolutely. So really I set my, when I say routine, I really try to be disciplined for the morning and the night. That's always kind of been a big thing for me. You know, I like to get up at 6.30 a.m. every day, write my journal, say my affirmations, and then I directly go to a cold shower. And in that cold shower, and I used to have it hot and turn it cold. Now I'm starting to just go in cold. I can't lie. I'm not consistent every day, but most of the time I 
am pretty consistent. And in that time when I'm in that cold shower, you really try to set the foundation for your day, try to like, you know, get energy up and just kind of overcome yourself, you know, not being a program, not being a routine and kind of just set, look at your day, set goals for your day. And then I go out and usually I go work out. I have different, you know, whether I'm training with my dude or I'm going on my own, but it's really just winning those first 20 minutes, you know, and I'll meditate after. And what I've really been trying to implement is reading, reading for at least 40 minutes. Cause a lot of the stuff I'm trying to do, I need to be equipped with a lot of knowledge with nature. And uh, I just have so much to learn, but setting that foundation, you do that every single day. I mean, your day is going to be successful. And then at night, which is so powerful too, is, uh, which is interesting. I feel like a lot of people should tap in with this because it helps me so much. Because like I said, I get up in the morning and then I go straight to the shower the night before I put my clothes in the bathroom for the next day. Mm. So right when I get out, I'm already set, but I, I get that set up. I write my journal. I, uh, and then kind of just mentally plan for the next day, but just having those two foundations for the night and the, and the morning, just for you to ground yourself is so impactful because you do that consistently and you set that foundation. I mean, no matter what you want to do, you're going to be successful, literally. <laughs> right. So, man, that's a, that's a sweet thing. When did you start picking this? Uh, like, when did you start to implement the routine like that? Uh, probably about three years ago. And just been consistent. There's been flows where it's getting up a little later, and then, but in the last couple of months, I've really just had to lock, lock in because it's, I mean, it's go time and just be disciplined. If you can have that discipline every single day, it's definitely powerful. Mm. And that mindset that you have, <clears throat> you said it with like being a barber and then being a hooper, like you just go all in and you just, mm -hmm. were you always someone who just, just puts their head down and grinds or is that something that's kind of been gained through perspective uh, you know pretty much and i think the key with a lot of people in a way get wrong is they focus on stuff outside themselves you know like and what i do is just become my best self so anything i want to do i'm going to become good at like if i can like i said get back to the routines just get myself right get my mindset right get my energy right anything i want to do is going to it's i'm going to get great at it. versus like oh i want to really get good at this but I got terrible routines. My energy is always down. I'm negative, like low vibrations. Like it's going to be hard to get good at something when you're always in that state. So focusing within, focusing on yourself. And then that the outcome of that is you're going to get good at whatever you want to get good at. Mm. Man. So it's, yeah, it's definitely powerful. Man, yeah, it's a mindset that it's like. For sure. Because it's, well, it's it's not just like let's just take basketball for an example. You're going all in on basketball. It's well, yes, you're refining a skill, but that skill can be transferable into any field of life if you approach cool. it in the same way. So uh, it's cool to see how you're letting that play out with all the different interests you're pursuing. And uh, yeah, man, the nature thing is just it's to me it's beautiful. Like I you you are a deep dive into it, and I like so. I, uh, the logo I have for my, for the podcast, I just kind of yeah. redid it or whatever. And the cover I had initially, it was, a, uh, it was like of a, of, of a shadow figure kind of looking out at mountains and, and it was, it's so like, to me, I see mountains and, and just nature is so symbolic for so many things. You know what I mean? Like I was just talking to my buddy about what a tree, a tree gave me a great analogy the other day. I had a game that I was a little bit. I was unsure of, like, I was shaky, and I was kind of like, shit, I'm a little nervous, I want to compete at my highest level, but it's like, I saw the tree as, like, the root of fear, and then the branches were kind of like the what-ifs, you know what I mean, like, the little variations of, oh, what if this happens, what if this happens, but it's like, underneath that big root, right, is, like, all the ones of just pure little care, like, I care so much that it stems into this, so it's like, I know that's a little tangent, but I, it was just a... Nature oh, is a beautiful thing, man. Oh, for sure. Nature yeah, is nature's a incredible beautiful thing. Um, so is there anything else you'd like to add about your pursuits in the future or something you're kind of working on right now or with with you and, and your nature vibe? Uh, yeah. I mean, I would love to just say that, I mean, in a way, I'm just kind of getting started, but also for a lot of people to do what they love, to go within and just have trust in yourself, you know, and just especially when it comes to nature and for people go out in nature, go take a walk by yourself, go sit with your thoughts. Cause Nate, we are a part of nature and it can be so recharging. A lot of people right now in a way are lost. 
And, uh, but man, everyone has greatness within them. Everyone has a unique purpose as to why they're here that they have to uh, live in. And, uh, but just go take a walk in nature, go be more observant, go be more appreciative, almost get to know nature, learn a little about nature, learn about what birds you can see. Cause when you, when you know what you can see, you can connect to it more and you can understand it more. It's just, it's so complex, it's so incredible. Uh, if you could, you know, understand maybe what plants are native, what plants are invasive, maybe, you know, you can plant some natives, do some work, but just, just go tap in with yourself, go, go chase whatever you love to do. Don't worry about what other people are going to think, have that belief in yourself, take action, be disciplined for it. But we really can do whatever we want. I mean, we live in a world where an endless opportunities, humanity is waking up and life's incredible and we can do like I said whatever we want so you have a passion for a reason it's going to take work I mean you're going to have to your passion is not going to like you have to it's going to take work to figure out what it is brainstorm you know how you can make it your profession but I mean everyone wants meaning in their life and I think that comes from doing what doing what you love and why you are supposed to be here and uh, just going all in on it that's uh <laughs> That's that's a bullseye answer, man. Shit, oh, I appreciate that was it, right up, right on the money, right on the money. Um, just one more thing that I kind of thought of um, with the sport of golf, something that yeah. attracted me to it. I I actually read a couple books on like I don't know if you're familiar with the book Putting Out of Your Mind or Fearless Golf, mm -hmm. but I, I I started playing a little bit recently and. The reason I, I was drawn to your stuff is the way your mentality and the way you approach a shot. You're like, hey, I, you know, I, I can't remember a specific example, but you're like, oh, this is a great opportunity to hit an incredible shot, you know. And that's something that I've kind of fallen in love with, especially with yeah. golf. You know, you, I'm not great by any measure, but it's like I'm going to approach this shot. And regardless of how I feel, like if I get anxious about messing up my score at the end, I'm going to hit a great shot, you know. So yeah. I want you to, I want you to kind of talk about that and, and the mentality you were trying to portray, um, to get other people to look within and really just say, Hey, you know what, if you see whether or not it's actually a, a physical golf shot or just metaphoric for their kind of, um, you know, pursuit and whatever they want to do, just like, what were you trying to instill in people with that question? No, absolutely. Out. That's really why I love golf. Cause it is the ultimate mind game and there's so many great opportunities to practice I think which is one of the best mindsets is you know when you go over a ball and you're focused on what you don't want you know oh man I don't want to hit this slice or this and that you're sending energy to that like you're focusing and fueling that and you know you have to be disciplined and aware of really what are your thoughts over the ball and just kind of in, in any life you know if you're focused on what you don't want you're going to get what you don't want so being disciplined to focus on what you do want you know going over a drive and feeling embodying hitting that drive perfect you know a lot of people yeah they say yeah i tried that didn't work but really did you feel that like i'm not saying think it like really feel that it's already happened and that i mean going to manifest manifesting like that is the foundation of it it's really feeling like it's already happened i think golf is a great opportunity to practice that consistently golf is very tough for a lot of people including myself and the way it is tough to because you obviously you know you will shank it and your mind just wants to just go crazy but it's great opportunities to just ground yourself and just practice that focus of sending out the energy that you do want and uh if man and it really helps especially with putts i think you really go over the ball you feel that it's already going to go in, but really embody that. Not just, yeah, hit it randomly, obviously read the break, but really just be confident in it. Most of the time it's going to go in if you really find that good feel. I've had some crazy ass putts where it's just like, like really, like I don't think of anything else. I just try to get very present in the moment and then find that feel like it already went in. Like sometimes I'll envision uh, people around me like, oh my God, he really made that putt. <laughs> I love it. Before I love it before I hit it and then it'll drop. And, it, and then there's times where I'm aware, you know, I'm really not in the right field and I won't hit it right. So mm -hmm. golf is really a mind game. Obviously, you know, it's a physical game. Got to get your swing right. But it's golf is such a great opportunity to practice that and just tap in with kind of your emotions, how you're thinking. You, yeah, but 
man, it's definitely powerful if you can find that right feel just in anything, you know, in anything you want to do, even before this podcast affirmations, I'm, a, I'm confident I'm going to have a great podcast I'm feeling, feeling like we already had the conversation. It went amazing things and that, but just having that connection with yourself and, and understanding of what energy you're sending, uh, sending out and being aware of it is so powerful and so important. Dude, I, I, I just, I love everything you said in there, man. And could you, it, could you, cause you like, I love the way you spoke on energy and kind of feeling it and reading it and your awareness mm -hmm. to your energy and or vibrations. Can you like break that down a little bit more and just go into depth about whatever reading energy or feeling vibrations? No, absolutely. I mean, we are energetic beings, you know, in a physical reality and kind of comes down. I mean, do you, do you meditate at all? I do. Yeah, absolutely. And meditation, you know, so key to kind of just ground yourself, but you know, vibrations, you, I think we can feel when we're at a high vibration, you know, good vibes and you can attract those things. So just being very uh, particular on what energy you're sending out and be in tune with, you know, is this a negative vibe? Uh, uh, and just because, I mean, when you walk into a room and if there's tons of negative, you're going to feel that. So we all project a certain energy. So if you can become familiar with, you know, what is my dominant vibration or what is things that will raise my vibration I can do consistently. It's just so important because, you know, we really uh, manifest our realities. And if you're not aware of really what your dominant energy is, you know, your life is just going to kind of unfold without any direction, but we really can determine what our life leads us and uh, kind of just coming into energies and tapping in and feeling those energies. And it's just so, it's so powerful and it's so important for people to just really uh, understand, you know, the difference and feel it and then meditate and just let things go and just be one and be in the present moment, not think in the future, think in the past, just be here right now. It's just, it's yeah, the present moment. That's really the most important. Man, bro. I love it. I love it. And then just last one to, yeah. kind of wrap up um the name of the podcast is through it all podcast so what does the phrase through it all um mean to you and you, you like your your story your journey Ooh, through it all that's deep i love that i think uh you know i look at my life and how i've been through a lot and how there's been many stages and i think just fully embracing the now fully embrace each level of your life and uh you know obviously focus on your future but just fully embody what stage you're in fully embody emotions whether negative or positive and just embrace it all you know through it all i've been through many stages but yeah I, mean, I, I like that name through it all i'm resonating with that right now but sweet definitely uh yeah that's deep that's deep all right sweet man and then uh last three quick ones that i like that i want to end with uh favorite movie Ooh, favorite movie man probably uh avatar mm. i would say okay right Which, on do you want to add on that no no not even i mean because it kind of comes to the nature and how you know we need to be one with it i was just laughing because i'm thinking if you had asked for my favorite tv show it's uh, avatar 2 avatar last year <laughs> have okay. you seen avatar last year Bender? i haven't i haven't oh, but I, my friend sent me clips from it oh bro you have to watch that you have to yeah like, it, it's a must okay i'll i'll, ta I'll tap in all time he sent me, uh, one of my buddies, Will, sent me like a little hit, a clip of him unlocking his, his chakras. And it was just, I, it was oh, so, for, deep, bro. so deep, dude. And you, it need, was like, you need to watch it. It's yeah, so good. I, I most definitely will. Um, I will watch it. Um, and then next question, Chick-fil-A or Cane's? I would say Chick-fil-A. You know, we don't really have Cane's much around where I'm at in Indiana. I think one just opened up. I tried it when I was in... Uh, uh, uh where was i in uh tennessee it was good but you know chick-fil-a that's just different mm, okay Chick right on it's good yeah it is it's money okay and then last question i like to ask everyone i have on um what advice would you give to yourself at your lowest mm. Mm. well what, what advice would i give myself at my lowest just to keep pushing to understand that this is happening for a reason the emotions that you're feeling are happening for a reason and they're getting you ready for bigger things to uh, just keep tapping in with who you are to have that trust in your bigger vision and just to know that it's going to work out and that these emotions will pass and that you have a great future ahead of you. <sighs> Fucking love it, dude. 
man Bye. i appreciate it man this is oh, a lot man. of growth first podcast definitely uh Dude. grateful for the opportunity hell yeah man you, you're you gonna have to be on uh way down the line too man this is just oh, sure, too man. too no, pure too 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 good i'm uh i'm gonna stop recording is that cool okay